So it appears this Raspberry Pi is getting a little bit full on the hard drive, 66% of 6.98 gig. Well, it's an 8 gig micro SD card. Yeah, it's probably about time I did something about this. And you could say, well, why not put a bigger micro SD card in? And indeed I could. It is only an 8 gig micro SD card and I've got a few spare 16 and 64 gig micro SD cards in the drawer next to me doing nothing. I'm going to try and solve this problem first. What is using all this space? And this is just a DNS server, so surely there shouldn't be that much on here. Well, it's a little bit more on the DNS server, but yeah, shouldn't be too over the top. So how am I going to find this out? This is only a Linux server. There is no graphical user interface. You know, it's not like I could do in KDE using file light. You know, I can easily navigate the file systems and your lovely pie chart here showing where disk usage actually is occurring. Yeah, the videos folder is a little bit chunky on here, as is the VirtualBox folder. Makes sense for me. And there is the equivalent tool in GNOME, the Disk Usage Analyzer. So yeah, all those could have been used if I had a graphical user interface. I'm going to start with up in my rights to root user because I want to get a full view of the hard drive. I mean, there may be things in the log files that I can't actually read under my normal user account. And to confirm the problem with df-h, that is disk-free, human-readable. Yeah, we can see that the microSD card is indeed about 70% utilised. In terms of snap usage, it's not too much on here. Yeah, a few hundred meg. That's not horrific there. It's definitely a problem somewhere else. Now I'll go up to the root file system. And let's try ll. That's not really showing any useful file sizing there. I could go recursive, uh, ll-r, um, <laughs> a little bit too recursive there, <laughs> I can't read all that. So um, let's cancel that, and yeah, I could pipe that through to less and I'd be able to read it, uh, but that's still not overly useful really. So let's try the disk usage, du. So just in its normal form, oh, it's just going to fly through again, isn't it? But not very readable on file sizes, so you can make it human readable. But, you know, it's flying through with like kilobytes and not very useful there. We can limit how much it goes through the directories. Let's go down one level only. Oh, this is promising. We've actually got some sizing here. It's taking a bit of a long time to calculate all this. You're okay there. You might find some areas that are unreadable, I guess. Yeah. Can't access the proc folder, but that doesn't really exist. I mean, yes, it exists, but not physically on the hard drive. That is more for the kernel. So, okay, we've got some definite issues in the USR folder and the var folder. So that's helpful. So you know, I could then start going down to var. And yeah, this is all a bit manual still. I'm getting some answers here. Yeah, we've got oh, some big folder there, var logs. Oh, I, can't, I want to do this quicker. I could use the tree command. Again, that, there's a lot there though. <laughs> I had to install tree. That is perhaps where the likes of ls, du and df come in handy because they were going to be pre-installed. I could do the same again with tree and sort of look down through the file structure, but that seems to be looking more like the file sizes of ls and they're not really recursive and they're not going through the folders. One last one, I'm going to try the ncurses disk usage, ncdu. And I have a feeling this is going to be the best one. Yeah, saving the best to last here. So it's taken a little while going through the whole file system, scanning all the folders. I suppose the read write speed of the micro SD card is a bit limiting. Oh well, look at that, it's ordered it by largest first. And I've got keyboard controls. I'll press question mark for help. Oh, okay, there's a little bit of help there. But I'm sure I'll get by with um, just a simple navigation. Ha! Ah, <laughs> there's a little problem there. So we've got quite a lot with, in the firmware. Okay, that may have been something that uh, Ubuntu have like, pre-installed. So let's go back. I'm using left and right to navigate there. Now the var folder. That. Oh, that might be a folder I can do something about. So lib. Ah, MySQL. Hmm. <laughs> no track, no track database and DNS log. Wow. Okay. After the number of DNS logs I have is a problem, I can do something about that. 
Let's have a look at the DNS server, log retention, uh, I can lower the number of days. So that reduces the log sizing. So come tonight, that will reduce in size a little bit. Okay, let's go for log, ah, uh, journal, that's system D, ah. Uh. <laughs> so the system D journal and MySQL are a couple of problems that I've identified. So system D, journal CTL, uh, journal CTL dash R, let's see what is in there. And I can see this is actually my fault. What I've done is made no track far too noisy. So I'm going to quieten no track down a bit. Obviously all these little outputs into the log have been accumulating over time and this probably has been quite a lot of time. So I'm going to clear some of these logs out. So we're going to go back to only the last couple of days. So vacuum in the system D journals has freed up 600 meg of disk space. That's really good. And if I do uh, disk df dash h, so where are we up to now? Well, that's 9% of disk space freed there. So I've gone from 70 down to 61%. Anyway, that was a look at how to solve the disk usage issue via the Linux terminal. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.